Hello there. My name is Dr. Salim Javed. I am an associate professor at the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication at Lingyaz Lalita Devi Institute of Management and Sciences. And we have been talking about different story formats. And today we are going to talk about Gustav Freitag's pyramid. Now, the spelling of Gustav is G-U-S-T-A-V, but it is pronounced as Gustav, then Freitag and then pyramid. And this is how you can see on your screen Freitag's pyramids look like. Now, technically, somebody can say, Salim, sir, it is not a pyramid. It's like half of it, the latter part, half of it is in the air. Yes, it does, but there is another representation like this is also available. That's why it's called Freitag pyramid plot diagram. Now, if you look at this Freitag pyramid diagram and you see that how, what are the things that are involved in this pyramid? So, number one is exposition. And obviously, there is a star. If you can see, then that is called inciting incident. We'll talk about. We will talk extensively about inciting incident. Then there is a stage of rising action, climax, then falling action, and then resolution. Now, if you remember that when I was talking about uh, uh, five turning point, that is where I was talking about uh, you know climax. Now, a general perception that people have in mind that climax is the end of the story. But if you can see that climax is just the mid highest point after which you have the falling action and then the resolution. So there is something very interesting about this Freitag pyramid that you will get to know. If you see this pyramid, you know, as it is not in a conventional sense, but if you see a pyramid which is something like this, which has got a beginning, middle and end, you know, now this looks like a proper pyramid and then you have, um, you know, incidents, you have rising action, climax, falling action, and then you have uh, uh, ending also. Now, if you look at it, you know, this is in the very conventional sense, it looks like a pyramid which has got a beginning, middle and end. If you remember and if you have been following that I have been talking about different story formats, beginning, middle and end is a very classical example of a storytelling tradition which is basically Aristotle which has divided its story into three acts, act one, act two and act three and the beginning is act one, middle is act two and ending is act three. So there is also one of the things that uh, I have read it somewhere that it also says that Freitag pyramid is you know inspired from Aristotle. There is no denying of this fact. Writers, thinkers have been uh, taking inspiration from each other and you will get to know about this also. Now, the very interesting thing about Freitag pyramid plot diagram is that when you will, when we together will be exploring this particular topic, then for the first time I will let you know that how these story formats, you know, I have been explaining in terms of stories. What if you get an ad to make? You know, is there an example of any ad which is based on some story format? I'll be sharing a Hyundai ad, uh, maybe in the next lecture, where we will be comparing how Freitag pyramid is being used in an ad. I mean, that is of a Hyundai, so that's that's why I'm taking the name of Hyundai. Now, before we start understanding any sort of story format, you know. The act of storytelling, you know, the when we talk, to, talk about different story formats, so the act of storytelling holds a significant historical legacy. Now, we have been hearing stories since our childhood. We have been listening to our colleagues' stories also, very interesting stories, especially when they get late and, you know, you come up with a new story. So, there has been a tradition of stories. We have been loving it. We have been sharing it. We have been carrying it forward. We, we have been giving it to next generation also. And we have received it from the earlier generation also. So, there is a historical significance of stories and storytellings representing one of the humanity's old tradition. So, if passing on recipes, you know, passing on the craft of agriculture, if passing on, you know, uh, technology from one generation, doesn't matter if, it, if it, it was about stone age or copper age, whatever it has been. So, one of the tradition along with all these traditions has been that we have been passing stories. Now, there is a beautiful example, uh, beautiful example everywhere available uh, all around the world. When we did not have hammer and, uh, you know, uh, or, or nail or chisel, 
we were even then also we were recording our our uh, stories if you uh, if you know about cave paintings you know there were no formal papers available there were no formal paints available but even then people were you know maybe they may not have discovered language also but they were you know tra- transferring emotions stories of hunting stories of gathering a, a, a precious resource through pictures so wh- you know storytelling is not necessarily based on words it has got its own style sometimes you don't use words but you know convey the entire sense what you want to say uh, may- maybe you do not have paints but you have you know a stone and with the help of that stone you etch a image on the wall of a cave and this is how today we discover cave painting and obviously there were paints also used and other things was also used so the act of storytelling traditionally holds a significant historical legacy representing one of the humanity's old tradition now despite the vast array of genres and languages that create writing and compasses the fundamental formula of narrative has remained relatively consistent throughout time now this is something very you know uh, this is something uh, which need to be understand that there have been like i i myself have during during this conversation i myself have told you about more than 10 different story format and this is a new story format so whatever the story format is what what you cannot deny is that there is a protagonist there is an antagonist there is uh, obviously plot there is subplot so all these things that goes into writing encompasses the fundamental formula of narrative which is relatively remain the same now if you if i give an example of ramayana and mahabharata ramayana is a very simple linear story you know of of a great status everything but it is a linear story technically mahabharat is also ramayan is all a technical story and if you look at mahabharat mahabharat is technically a linear story but you can start from anywhere you can start from shri krishna and then you move to uh, kaurav and pandav you can start from shikhandi also you can you can start mahabharat from uh, 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 pandu and uh, uh, dhatrasht also you know so you can start ghatotkach from ghatotkach story you can come you can go back in time come forward in time so whatever the narrative traditionally we as a indian tradition has been using uh, i i i give you a very interesting example and which can really surprise you um if you have seen a film called inception where you know there is an uh, there is a person who goes who specializes in going in the subconscious dream of an individual now if i tell you that that particular narrative style is technically a very uh, popular indian narrative style so some of you may not believe it and interestingly the name of that story tradition is unboxing stories within the stories and i have i'm very sure that i must have talked about it so we'll talk about it we'll exclusively talk about a boxing story within a story when i'll be talking about indian traditional narrative forms and how we have forgotten some of them now similarly to um, you know existence narrative can occasionally present challenges in terms of comprehension now some it must have happened with you that sometime even a very simple event in life is very difficult to understand so why it cannot happen in uh, uh, you know uh, cinema stories or or screen plays you know so similar to existence narratives can occasionally present challenges in terms of comprehension now because it presents challenge in terms of comprehension which means that sometime even stories become difficult to be understood you know so that's why these story formats have come into existence where they you know typically help you understand the structure of of maybe 200 pages maybe 300 pages maybe 400 pages so structures any any of the structure like suppose if you take a structure of a building also and you see it on a piece of paper that structure helps you understand or or it it gives you a insight you know what you are going to see 
on each floor, on each layer. So things like that happens and that's why we have story formats. Now regardless of the medium, whether short stories, novels, screenplay, memoirs or memories, plays, films or narrative, or narrative poetry, many stories adhere to a relatively straightforward structure known as Freitag pyramid. Now as, as I said that uh, it is uh, Gustav Freitag is his full name. Gustav Freitag, a prominent German novelist and critic during the 19th century analyzed plot structures and devised a visual tool known as Freitag pyramid. Now this tool also refers to a five act plot structure which uh, when we were looking at the pyramid you know there were five five points you know there were five points that is why it is called five plot structure or the narrative pyramid was developed to represent the elements of dramatic, uh, dramatic structure visually. By constructing a pattern in the shape of pyramid, Freitag aimed to facilitate the examination of plot structures in dramatic works. Now he is a 19th century, uh, he is a 19th century German novelist who analyze uh, uh, and there is one very interesting thing about um, uh, this German novelist um, Gustav Freitag that he critically or rather structurally or in the form of diagram analyzed William Shakespeare and I will be talking about Romeo and Juliet, I will be talking about Hamlet and we will be putting Freitag uh, pyramid on Romeo and Juliet and on Hamlet um, and on some ads, on some campaigns, on some half an hour documentary film and then we will try to see that how, I mean if, if someone asks me and says, uh, Salim sir, if I have to take one specific, um, you know, story format, then obviously my question will be what is the format that you want it for and if he says for films, yes, there are three, four very solid permanent sort of like uh, uh, the hero's journey 19 structure as more the number is it becomes easier to you know bifurcate a big task into small sections. But if someone says no, no I have got only 2 minutes. Now hero's journey format which is divided into 19 parts will be very difficult to adjust in 2 minutes. But Gustav Freitag pyramid is absolutely perfectly suitable for this sort of, uh, of, of work. Like suppose if you, have, if you have got a duration of 5 minutes then obviously in 5 minutes you cannot push in 19 um, uh, crucial elements but what you can push in is 5 crucial elements and that is why Gustav Freitag pyramid is you know good for in terms of 5 minutes, 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, like. If you have seen this short film which is a very popular short film in India, uh, Chutney. Now Chutney can be critically analyzed in from Gustav uh, Freitag's pyramid point of view and I think I will I'll do, do this in some of the videos where we on, on the one hand we put Gustav Freitag pyramid and then we put Chutney. Um, obviously, you need to see that film but due to copyright issue, we will not be able to show you the entire film in one hour lecture. But if someone says that I have seen the film for that one student, I can really do the comparison of uh, film, short film Chutney which is available on YouTube and then Fry Attack. So, we can gradually, uh, you know, compare it on the, on the basis of the structure. Now, by constructing a pattern in the shape of pyramid, Fry Attack aimed to facilitate the examination of plot structure now. Now Freitag pyramid or Gustav Freitag pyramid is a narrative framework that delineates the main arc of a drama into five discrete segments. Now so any story format you know it is not just true with Freitag pyramid I mean it is also true with Freitag pyramid which is dividing the main story in five parts uh, but you, you know the pyramid that we saw in the in the in, in the beginning uh, of uh, you know of the video that that is what five segment it is talking about now 
this is commonly you know this the pyramid that we saw is commonly referred to as Freytag triangle the narrative framework is a modified version of traditional five act structure now if you remember that we have talked about three act structure also and we have talked about five act structure also in terms of aristotle if you remember now the storytellers have employed for countless years now three act structure which is called a classical act structure which is which was developed by aristotle from 3 to 5 lot of people have moved so all, all these three act five act you know structures and obviously it is he is a 19th century um, uh, critic uh, novelist and uh, thinker philosopher technically uh, so it, it, at least 18th century onwards his uh, form of pyramid has been extremely popular with novelist filmmaker fil obviously filmmaker 1895 the first film afterwards when they started making it on a regular basis and wanted to have a structure and things like that so a lot of people were using Freytag, you know, pyramid. Now, Gustav Freytag drew extensively from the writing of Aristotle, as I was saying. You know, he has extensively, you know, uh, yeah, you know, borrowed rather, if I may say so, or draw, you know, if that that is a better academic word for <laughs> inspiration. So, ex they ha uh, Gustav has extensively, you know, borrowed or um, drawn from Aristotle, and there is one more person, um, Horace, you know, prominently uh, prominent figure in the ancient world. Now, ancient world, obviously, we are talking about Greek world. You know, ancient world is Greek world. Now, specifically, uh, Gustav Freytag incorporated idea from Aristotle's poetics. You know, poetics. Uh, I, this is what I was saying in one of my classes that if you are going to study, um, uh, suppose if you have made a mind that I want to study sociology, psychology, history, geography, mythology, anything, you know, or, or drama or poetics or acting or public speaking, everywhere you have Aristotle. You know, that sort of a personality Aristotle has. So, uh, Gustav Freytag has heavily borrowed from Aristotle's poetics, which outlines a triangular, obviously, which, as I have said, three-act structure and... Um, from Horace, one of his works called Ars Poetica, you know, which further develops this form of encompass five acts. Now, numerous stories that depicts the narrative structure known as Hero's Journey. I was talking about, you know, Hero with a Thousand Faces is the name of the book. And then you have Hero's Journey, adhere to this five act framework, a pattern also observed in the theatrical composition of playwright. William Shakespeare that I was saying that we will be talking about uh, um, uh, Romeo and Juliet then we will be talking about I think Hamlet for sure and then we will see how this five act structure is there you know it in 18th century Gustav Freytag has you know made it technically or discovered it but William Shakespeare is way before you know so think of William Shakespeare you know he may not have you know drawn it this way but his writing has this sort of pattern you know and that's why Gustav Freytag was able to discover this this um, this pyramid or this structure which which has you know come into a pyramid form the concept of uh, uh, Gustav Freytag pyramid was introduced by you know Gustav Freytag uh, a notable German playwright and novelist and the work in which he talked about it was Die Thinker the Drama or the Techniques of, of Drama. So that was the work in which he introduced this specific, uh, you know, this specific format. Now published in the 19th century because he was the 19th century uh, critique, writer, poet. So the literary analysts comprehensively examined the five act plot structure. Now, in his work title, as I said, the Die Thinker, Die Thinker, Thinker, uh, the dramas or technique of the drama, Freytag proposed a conceptualization of dramatic arc. Now, technically, if you look at all the, you know, um, all these uh, structures, you know, that I have been talking about, whether it has been uh, um, uh, Black Snyder beat sheet or the hero's journey 
or you know anything that we have talked about they are basically the conceptualization of the dramatic arc encompassing the progress of rise and falling action now any you know if whatever story formats that i have been talking about obviously if the character starts from stage a you know there is obvious progression and then if as i have said that if if the actor has started here doesn't matter how ups and downs has been like the graph there has been he always ends up from slightly higher from the point that he started now if somebody remembers this specific point that your protagonist or your antagonist you know anything that you and i are thinking about if they remain the same now this is something very tricky part if they remain the same you know obviously they will remain the same physically they will remain the same maybe there is some physical change may in the linear stories like mukaddar ka sikandar uh, he is just born thrown dumped picked up by uh, a baba then becomes a full full grown up man and then dies you know so in this sort of a story there is obviously a physical change also but like suppose if you pick up an example of life in a metro where the characters remain the same in terms of physical but they change emotionally you know so rise and fall in the arc in the character arc of a uh, of a individual or of protagonist you know so all these things are like there the framework resembles aristotle triangle mode although it incorporates two more plot aspects now what are these two more plot aspects obviously beginning middle and end three three act structure aristotle what is five or introduction middle and end you know another um, uh, name of the same form now fright act pyramid consists of five distinct acts exposition you know which is really important exposition which is number 1 number 2 is rising action third is climax you know sometime we think as i was young i used to think that climax you know film climax pe pahunch gayi ab to film khatam ho gayi you know so we have this sort of understanding but it is the third point in the row so exposition becomes the first point rising action becomes the second point climax becomes the third point you know now from three act structure now we are moving forward falling action becomes the fourth point you know uh and then you know denouncement you know if you can um, you know exposition now this name many of you may be hearing it for the first time exposition sir what what it is the rising action people can make a sense of rising action incidents will be in fast pace things will be moving faster climax many of you understand climax then falling action by the virtue of words or by the meaning of the words you understand that things are not going right uh, and then denouncement now this exposition and denouncement these are the two words which has which has confused people which confuses people and will keep on confusing people because this sort of a vocabulary has never been used in the system now contemporary screen writers novelists dramatists continue to employ fraytags pyramid as a foundational framework for you know conducting a captivating narrating a uh, narrative that elicits emotional gratification now let's understand each step one by one number one in the row is exposition now if you can see on your screen i have written introduction in the bracket now for ever i introduce you to this term called exposition which does not mean anything other than introduction so if i really want to impress you as a screenplay writer so i can come and ask you what is the exposition of the film what basically i am saying 
what is the introduction of the film we'll be understanding it thank you very much